record on this computer. All right. Hey, everybody. Ryan Chapman here, and I want to welcome everybody to the 9010 Nutrition community. This is our member community, and we're also doing our three-week uh, clean eating challenge right here in the group. So a lot of you are here for that. There's nearly 200 new people in here who are doing this three-week challenge with us. And if you have not um, said hi on the introduction video that I put in there, just a little video that says introduce yourself in the comments and three things to give us. There's like, you know, well over 100 comments on there. And um, if you haven't done that yet, you can go to videos in the group. So like under info, if you're on mobile, you'll find videos and you'll see that little video that says introduce yourself in the comments. Click on that, go to the comments, give us a little intro. I had a ton of uh, fun going through that and replying to everybody's comments and seeing where people are from. And we've got people from all over the country in here. We've got people, um, we've got nurses and med techs and stay-at-home moms and all kinds of stuff in here. We've got everything. And it's really awesome. And I'm so excited to do this group with you guys. This is our first major video. This is our, this is day one. This is our first major, um, you know, just talking about what 9010 Nutrition is and how to do it and all that kind of stuff. And what I'd really like to do is just give you a little bit of background on me and how 9010 Nutrition came about. Um, <clears throat> tomorrow, we're gonna dive more into how to do 9010 Nutrition, like how does the system work and everything. But I think that the how it came about story is important to understanding why it is like it is. And so I wanna tell you the whole story because it deeply impacted my life, changed my life, um, and it's why 9010 Nutrition even exists. And that has gone on to impact other people's lives, like the people that uh, are working on this project with me, This. 9010 Nutrition Project. So um, with that, uh, Heidi Bortz, Heidi Schroeder Bortz, uh, you'll see her in the group a lot. She is my business partner. She does all the recipes for 9010. There's almost 700 recipes in 9010 uh, right now. And uh, she is my number one business partner that works with me on this. So you'll see her in there all the time. Um, there's some longtime members and people that are, you know, part of my inner circle that help me do this. Uh, there's people who have lost weight with this. There's full-time members. There's all kinds of stuff in here. There's a wide ver variety of people. So if you're new coming into this, um, you're going to see some people who kind of already get the whole thing and they've been doing it a while and they've got it down. And then you're going to see a whole bunch of people who have no idea what they're doing. And um, I know that kind of stresses people out sometimes. So I want to make sure that you understand that there's new people in here who don't get it yet, just like you don't get it maybe. Uh, maybe you're like, what the heck is going on here? Just relax for a little while. I'm going to take you through it. Just pay attention. If you're watching this live video right now and you're like, I don't have 10, 15 minutes to sit here with you right now, you can come back and watch it. Just like save the link or something or come back and watch it, okay? This is always going to be here in the video section of this group, okay? So let me take you back to when I was a kid, give you an idea of, of what things were like for me. First of all, I want you to understand, I'm not the guy who has been fit all his life. I'm not the guy who has looked even like this. And if I lifted my awesome Bananas Yo t-shirt up for you right now, you wouldn't see a six pack. You wouldn't see a perfect body. And I'm okay with that. Some days I'm not okay with that. <laughs> Maybe you can relate to that. But I'm not, never have been the guy who's been fit all my life. I was an overweight kid. And I'll show you that um, when I bring up this presentation here. But I want you to understand it's not really all about that. I, I don't, we don't subscribe to that idea here. The point of this group, the point of this clean eating group is not for you to get a six pack. That might happen. <laughs> if you eat 90-10, that might happen. And depending on your workout routines and depending on your, your genetics and all kinds of stuff, you may get a six pack. But our goal is to be healthy, to feel good, to feel energetic, and to meet those kind of goals. Okay, so if you're here for that, then you're in the right place. Um, if you're here to count macros, count calories, um, you know, be a perfectionist and try to get everything exactly right so that you can, you know, have 5% body fat. Um, you might be able to do that here, but that's not really, you know, like our main purpose or our main goals. So anyway, let me take you, I'm going to share my screen with you. Um, if I can, you should be able to see my screen now. That is, uh, I'm kind of like brightened up there in the lower right corner, uh, spotlighted there. That's me in uh, when I was a kid. Uh, probably 10, 11, 11 or 12 years old on a baseball team. My dad is all the way to the left over here. This is my dad. I don't know if you can see my cursor. I think you can. Um, and then my older brother is two in from that. Um, so my older brother was skinny growing up. Um, my dad, you know, had some extra pounds on him, but he was tall and fairly uh, thin. And I was the overweight one. Um, 
I, I never really thought of myself as overweight. Um, in general, I, I just kind of played along with everyone else and, and I thought that I was fine. But there were times when I knew I was overweight because I would have to shop in the Husky section and my mom would take me to the Husky section. Or even some things would happen like my dad would take me shopping one time and I remember, I still remember this when I was about this age that he took me shopping one time and I think I had to get like a 34 or 36 size pants when I was still in my lower teens, like 12 or 13 years old. And he was like, whoa, buddy, whoa, like a 36 at like 13 years old. And that was a serious like shaming moment for me. He didn't mean it that way. But it was a serious moment that still hits with me, you know, like something was wrong with me, you know, that this is how I grew up. Maybe some of you guys can, can relate to this. Um, a little bit about nutrition in our house. We, um, we ate bagel bites, uh, corn dogs, pop tarts, hamburger helper. Uh, if we were on a diet, we ate lean cuisines. I don't know how many of you guys ate like this, but I was in a family of six kids. So that's my older brother there on the right of my grandpa, but I had four younger siblings as, as well. I think this picture shows all of us there, all six of us. And my mom was busy. You know, if you, any of the stay at home moms especially know, or I guess the, the moms or the dads who are working and have kids know how busy it is to have a couple of kids, much less six kids. And so a lot of times food was stuff that we could do ourselves. When I was 10, 11, 12 years old, I knew how to make Kraft macaroni and cheese without the directions because I'd made it so many times. And I knew how to do pop tarts and bagel bites and corn dogs and all that kind of stuff. It was stuff that we could do ourselves, but it was a lot of processed junk food. It was, uh, you know, stuff that could be frozen and could be bought in bulk at Sam's Club or Costco or whatever it was at the time. <clears throat> By the time I was 12 or 13, this picture right here, I think I was probably uh, like 14 or 15. But between these two pictures right here, I probably lost 20 to 30 pounds three or four times. And the way I used to do it was a 1200 calorie diet. I would um, just, I would go eat at places like Taco Bell and stuff like that. But I would ask for the nutritional information and I would count my calories and I would not go over 1200 calories and I would lose 20 or 30 pounds, but then I would gain it back. And that kind of, that cycle kept happening until all through college, I was, you know, I would go, I'd be 50, 60 pounds overweight, <clears throat> then I'd be 30 pounds overweight, then I'd be 70 pounds overweight, and then I'd be 30 pounds overweight. And it was back and forth, back and forth. And it was all calorie restriction, calorie counting type stuff. That's my Montana State University Bozeman, go Cats, go Bobcats. Uh, that's my uh, one card that they had. And that is my graduation picture from college in 2003. I was about 260 to 265 pounds. After I graduated from college, I gained another five to 10 pounds. I was 275 pounds at one point. At that point, I um, got into kind of a weight loss contest with my dad. We were trying, both trying to lose weight. And I started to lose weight, and then I got into another weight loss contest with a buddy at work, and I also met my future wife. And so in 2005, I had this weight loss contest, I had this wedding to look forward to, I had these big goals, uh, you know, I still had lots of bad stuff, bad baggage from being overweight all my life, but I had these big goals. So what did I do? I went back to a 200 or to a calorie counting diet, 1500 calories, and I ended up getting all the way down to 190 pounds from 275 pounds by the time I hit my wedding. So this is me at my wedding at like 190, 195 pounds maybe. Um, I lost all that weight and I did it with a 1500 calorie diet for nearly a year to lose all that weight, not quite a year. It worked, 1500 calories, my, you know, the thing I would always go back to, but I hated it. I absolutely hated that year of going to bed hungry, feeling deprived, feeling like, uh, you know, I, I couldn't eat what I wanted to eat. I ate lean cuisines. I ate uh, 100 calorie packs of M&Ms. I drank diet soda like crazy. And I was hungry and I didn't feel great and I was low energy. But it was like, to me, I don't know if you can, like, if, if this is how you feel about dieting right now. I, some of you probably do. But I felt like that's just how dieting is, right? You, you feel tired, you go to bed hungry, and that's just how it is. You've got to have a deficit in order to lose weight, and you've got to feel like crap, basically, to lose weight. It's just part of how it is, and it's going to be hard, right? So <laughs> there's kind of the, the, the difference between the two. Um, 
a couple more pictures there. That's like 2010 on the right, you know, so you, just so you can kind of see the difference. But then there was this turning point and this turning point was huge for me. It was around 2009, 2010, I saw a post on Facebook and the guy said, hey, listen, why don't you stop counting calories and start counting ingredients? And I was like, counting ingredients? What is this guy talking about? He said, okay, let's imagine someone who's on a diet and they're thinking they want to eat healthy. And let's look at a typical breakfast, morning snack, and lunch for someone on a diet. And he gave these three items. And I, and I kind of perked up when I saw this. I was like, this is what I would eat. I mean, I would eat a lean cuisine at work, a fettuccine Alfredo, because it's only 300 calories and I could put it in my 1500 calories. I would maybe eat, I, I wasn't really a big cereal person, but like stuff like this, right? Boxed food, said things like fiber and whole grain. It said things like lean in the title, you know, all that kind of stuff, low fat. I would, this is what I would do, right? He said, okay, now here's the ingredients list for those three items, the top part there is the the cereal the middle is the wheat thins and the bottom is the uh lean cuisine there's like 138 ingredients in those three items and some of them it's like there's there's like brackets upon brackets you know dehydrated flavorings has a bracket and then another bracket then modified food starch corn syrup solids flavor smoke flavor partially hydrogenated soybean oil end first bracket continue second bracket right like it's like holy crap there's like 130 something ingredients here this is crazy so he said let me try something different. How about oatmeal and honey for breakfast, blueberries for a snack, and for lunch, brown rice, green beans, chicken, and butter. Okay, even butter, right? Here's the difference. The real food, the second one, this stuff, almost same calorie count, almost same fat grams, carb grips, all the macros, right, that everybody counts and tries to make perfect, same deal, 130 ingredients versus seven ingredients. Now, which one do you think your body recognizes? That's what he said. He's like, which one do you think your body recognizes? So do the one on the right. Do seven ingredients instead of 130 ingredients. Think about your ingredients. And I was like, holy crap. I don't know if that works, but I'm going to give it a try. So in the summer of 2010 for 45 days, that's exactly what I did. I limited my ingredients and not my calories. I'm just trying this stuff out. I didn't have a system yet. It was just look at the ingredients. And if it had a lot of ingredients, I wasn't eating it. You know, even if they were good ingredients, if it had a lot, I wasn't eating it. I'm trying to keep my ingredients down just to try this. I still track my calories to see what they were, but I didn't try to limit them. And my average intake was 800 calories more than I would normally do on a diet. You know, remember I do 1500 calorie diets. That's how I lost all the weight. I was able to eat 2,300 calories and I lost another 15 pounds on this. And I was absolutely sold. I felt good. I was doing workouts that were fairly long workouts and I was feeling amazing. I had energy. I wasn't going to bed hungry. My fat intake went up, which was interesting. You know, like I wouldn't, I didn't used to eat avocados because they had too many calories, right? But now I can eat avocados because it's got one ingredient. So it, it was just absolutely mind boggling to me. And so what happened from that is I started to realize that this nutrition facts label that you see on foods is has it has information in it but that where we really want to look is here in the ingredients that that's more important not that there's nothing valuable in the nutrition facts section but that the ingredients were more important and the first place that i wanted to look in my food so an example here is this creamy peanut butter by jiff you look at the nutrition facts it's got 190 calories 16 grams of fat seven grams of protein, eight grams of carbs. Then you look over at the ingredients, it's got peanuts and sugar, plus molasses, plus hydrogenated vegetable oils, plus mono and diglycerides, it's got all this stuff, right? Then you go on to something like Adam's peanut butter, Adam's 100% natural, the nutrition facts are almost exactly the same. It actually has an, a, an additional gram of protein, which everybody's like, protein, yay, you know, that's, a, that's the hero. But you look at the ingredients, it's just peanuts and a little bit of salt. There's no hydrogenated oils, no molasses, no sugar, none of that kind of stuff. And it's like, this is what makes the difference. This is the number one thing that makes the difference. Again, not saying that macros mean absolutely nothing and calories mean absolutely nothing, but the main thing that we need to focus on was ingredients. And that's what I took away from it. So I'm going to do a little test to end this video because I don't want to go too much longer. I'm already, you know, pushing it with, with length on these videos. And I always do. I'm kind of a talker. Um, but I want to do a little test with you here. So if you're watching this on Facebook, I'm 
kind of in this presentation, so I'm not looking at the Facebook Live feed right now. I will afterwards. But if you're watching it, I want you to look at these two nutrition facts. One has 87 calories, one has 65 calories for this serving. Five grams of fat in one, no grams of fat in the other. Carbs, there's only nine grams of fat on the left. On the right, there's 17 grams of carbs. And then on the left, there's 1.7 grams of protein. The one on the right has no protein in it. So I'm going to give you like 30 seconds. Which one do you think is the healthier item based on the nutrition facts? I'm giving you 30 seconds to put it down. I don't even know if anybody's watching right now because I'm in this presentation and I can't see. Um, but I'm going to give you 30 seconds right now. Even if you're watching this on a recording, you, you'll still have this 30 seconds. Um, but I'm going to give you a little bit more time. 10 seconds. Which one do you think is the healthier item? The big reveal coming up. All right, let's do the big reveal. So the one on the right is an apple. It has one ingredient. It's an apple. Um, apples have the saying that goes along with them, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Most people, 99% of people um, that are healthy eaters would say an apple falls under healthy eating. Um, the one on the left is a Reese's peanut butter cup. <laughs> and its ingredients are milk chocolate, which contains sugar, you know, cocoa butter, chocolate, milk, lactose, soy lecithin as an emulsifier, peanuts, sugar, dextrose, and preservatives. So I think most people would agree that the apple is more healthy than the Reese's peanut butter cup, but I bet some people, even if they didn't write it down, thought at least had to think about this, right? Based on the nutrition facts, you had to think about it because you're like, oh, well, this one's got some protein. The other one didn't have any protein. This one's got less carbs. The other one had way more carbs. This one does have more fat, but the prevailing health trends right now is that fat's okay, carbs are bad, protein is good, right? So by the prevailing macro knowledge today, this one beats the apple because it has less carbs, more protein, and hey, it's got some more fat, but you know we're okay with fat now, right? So that's, I'm gonna stop this screen share now. And that's pretty much the end of this video. But that's the story of how 9010 started to come about. I'll tell you a little bit more about how we created the actual system of 9010 on the next video tomorrow, where I'll actually talk about how 9010 works and how we do our green, yellow, and red tiers. But I hope this has uh, connected with you in some way because I know it's connected with a lot of people. The idea of calorie counting and um, how ingredients are really what we need to be looking at. So that's the main focus of 9010. Thank you guys for watching.